Aye, well, here I am, me like, riding through an entirely fabricated night in a pretend handsome carriage. I'm on my way to see Nigella for a crazy midnight tryst outside the back of Mega Bingo. Actually, that isn't even true, sadly. I'm on my way to meet Sean Thomas in Newcastle to go on a ghost hunt. Okay, driver, don't spare the horses. Hey, Sean. Sean Thomas, how you doing? Steady the horses, driver. Yeah. <laughs> I am here, you are, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was, that, was that Clive driving? What, my driver with his wild staring yeah, yeah, eyes? Yeah, yeah. What, and hairy palms? Very much so. Screaming and squawking like an animal. Pulled the horse in yeah, reverse, yeah, yeah. did I? <laughs> yeah, that was Clive. Aye, yeah. aye. He's at the go, though. He's busy this afternoon. He's going back to my uh, Edwardian pretend mansion to... Uh -huh. to uh, clean up the crypt. Yeah, you got to make sure the boudoir is looking good. Uh, right? Yeah, well, we've got Lumpama coming yeah, over for the right. weekend. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've been having a look. We're going on a ghost tour, aren't we? Uh, no pub for us. Cause yeah, we can't go to the pub uh, due to the new lockdown restrictions. So <laughs> that's kind of ruined that. We may team. try and find somewhere where you can drink outside, but the current Newcastle weather um, doesn't seem to board for that. Uh, and plus, one of us has had a drink last night, yeah, and um, I, I can't imagine which one of us it was, <laughs> but one of us is feeling a bit fragile. So Hence my ghostly pale countenance. Ghostly, ghostly pallor, yeah. Which is just as well for a ghost tour. Listen, let's make a start. Uh, let's go to uh, the Theatre Royal. Indeed. Right now, imagine we're at the theatre. And <laughs> 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 do a little bit more. So here we are at the Theatre Royal. <laughs> you shouldn't Did have you? made us run behind the horses. <laughs> so, here we are outside the Theatre Royal, built in 1837. There was a fire in 1899 and it destroyed it all. No. And maybe that is the source of the rumours about the Grey Lady. Or oh, the spectre of the Grey Lady. The Grey Lady. Yeah, I used yeah. to work at the Theatre Royal and people used to talk There's about seeing the Grey Lady. There's not many little windows, like, where do they see her? Yeah. I mean, you've got the big bit at the front, yeah. obviously, and then yeah, you've yeah. got the shop at the side. Where, where, where was she? Where I she? don't know if she's meant to be up. She walked down the stairs. Yeah, up in the stalls, looking down, was what I heard from one person. The cheap seats. Like this. I mean, how convinced... Uh, out, of, out of ten, how much... Validity, would you give the grey lady of the yeah, Theatre Royal? Don't know. I mean, it sounds like a bit of a kind of. Something about it leaves me neither scared nor bothered. No, <laughs> no, I must admit I'm not quaking my boots. Well, let's, let's move on. Let's go to the next stop, which is the old George Courtyard. Well, this is it. Courtyard. Yeah, oh. the old George, or at least the back end of the courtyard, because it goes along quite a way. There's more of it there, but I think we'll end up in get, getting that spot where I do want to go further down. Yeah. You can walk through it in a set. It's all like an old cobbled, this must be it's a really, really old. old cobbled street. Yeah, this is the yeah. oldest. Have I said this all? I've said this already, I don't know. Uh, as I say, it's the oldest open pub in Newcastle now. Um, so it is quite a creepy spot. You yeah, can understand yeah, you can why there'd be why ghost people, stories. And I um, imagine a few people around. have. I've had a few spirits themselves while they've been there wandering down here. It's quite creepy. So, well, apparently Charles I stayed here yeah, yeah. while he was in, in, in prison, like, as an open prisoner. He used yeah, to go yeah. and play golf at Shield Field, apparently. Oh, right. uh, and they've got a seat he sat in, but... Yeah. You can't different go and different see world it. when you're a prisoner, but you get to sit, play golf and shield field, <laughs> like... And sit in the pub. It shows if you've got a bit of cash. Yeah. Now it's changed, has it? Yeah. Yeah. But so, again, a bit like I've got to say, it's a nice place, and it's uh -huh. a nice, nice place to come for a drink. Yeah. But in, in terms of ghost stories, um, well, is, is it a white lady by any chance? No, it's the Charles the First. Apparently, no, the. But he they, didn't die here, though, did he? No, 
he got beheaded down in London. So why would so he? Why, so he had, home? So he had, it was up here because that's where his favourite golf course was. Is, yeah. With other golf courses, <laughs> like a fair way away. The bar staff and people say occasionally they see a shadowy figure. A shadowy but figure. It's yeah. always a shadowy. It is. Uh, so this is the Cooper Ridge, I think. Ah. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that was the. I think that's the Cooper Ridge. I could be wrong. Might be the next lot of steps down. So at the old Cooper Ridge, you, you can look out and you're looking mm -hmm. out across the Tyne, which is very uh -huh. swollen and grey and uh -huh. stormy looking, isn't it? Uh, and apparently Henry Hutton was right, chased we'll, down we'll here. Right, Henry Hutton in a minute. Uh, uh, well, we'll what, you want to go back? I want to go back. All oh, oh, right, OK. Well, he got chased down here by a press gang, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get him to become a sailor on a ship. Uh -huh. And uh, he didn't want to be... You we've been down three places now, not one fucking ghost. Actually, well, this is. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I've uh, interrupted your story again. Yeah, what? Yeah, uh, they beat him to death. Well, the thing about all these ghost tour ghost stories, uh -huh. I had look online yesterday. He, he's not seen as a dark shadowy figure. This was definitely. No, no, that's, he's, the, he's the only one who's not a dark, dark shadowy, shadowy figure. figure right? So, yeah. so I, I'm finding these uh, ghost tour. Ghost tour, uh, yeah. ghost tour stories really rubbish, uh -huh. and. Uh, what I'd like to do is take you to see something. If, if, if we're talking about echoes from the past, mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is take you to something that when me and Nev Clare did the podcast the other day, uh -huh. we found something really interesting. All right, and if we're talking about echoes of the past, mm -hmm. let me just show you this, and then we can go for a coffee and make up for all this walking around. Yeah. Right. Have you got any money, by the way? Because I've got money. Oh, yeah. excellent. Right, OK. Right. Yeah.
can we get through this way? Yeah, I don't know. Four. Me and Nev were here the other day and we found these, basically what we're looking at is some graffiti, which you can tell that it's like copper plate graffiti. It's oh. like old school fancy writing that we're looking at. And what I really liked about this is when we came here the other day, as opposed to your ghost stories about Charles I sat mm -hmm. in this seat and uh, the grey lady was here. This is real. It's actually somebody's initials, you know, not, not a grey lady or whatever, an actual person. At some level, yeah. when you're standing mm -hmm. in front of these, there's something quite eerie about it to me, more, much more eerie than some daft story about a king visiting the city. Because you feel like you you are just yeah. stood in the, the the space that they occupied mm -hmm. in front of the same thing. Surprised there's not more willies on here, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more I suppose it is next to the <laughs> church. Yeah, they scratch it. Ah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it does make you think. I wonder when the first cock and balls was out. <laughs> no, we can't have that. <laughs> I think it was probably when the first caveman lit the scraper. <laughs> So, Sean, why have, why have you brought us here? Well, we're at um, the Central Station in Newcastle, which is a lovely old Victorian train station, obviously. Um, I've heard rumours of a ghost here as well, a um, shadowy figure that lurks around um, the... Sometimes the, the, you know, there's an, there's an end that's not Hang used on, I haven't much. heard anything about a ghost at the train station. Where, I was looking it's, through it's, the website. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, de it's definitely a, a sort of slightly overweight shadowy figure. Yeah. You know, the shadowy figure again. And apparently he lurks near the central craft beer local ale shop. So often I go down there looking for him and think, oh, I'll have a wee right, and I'll okay, we'll, get some we'll, beer. Let's just stop this fast right now. You've just brought us here so we can <laughs> go and get some bottles of beer for later. Well, it is a craft beer shop. <laughs> go on then, let's go in. Here <laughs>
So showing the thing with our ghost tour, our ill-fated ghost tour, yeah. was that the thing with those stories is they they don't touch her at all. Yeah. They're not like a human. It's not like York. It's not <laughs> like the ghost tour in New York. No, it's like the. It's just. Uh, you know, Charles I slept here. Well, did he even sleep yeah. there? But I wanted to ask you, because in your line of work, or you work as an NHS nurse, mm -hmm. you, you were telling me before that you have come into contact with some interesting experiences. Do you want to tell me something mm -hmm. about those? I don't know if I've personally came in contact with spooky experiences. Well, at least I don't think they're spooky, but a lot mm -hmm. of the girls are very sort of... Um, what's the word, superstitious around certain things. So if someone right, dies, yeah. they always open the window in the room to make sure that the spirit can get out really? and all that kind of thing. Yeah, right. yeah. So you get that. So, I mean, I do it, even though I don't believe it, just because, like, everybody else does and you kind of think you should. Um, just in case, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, so... Um, we're here to think somebody was rattling around going, let us out, let us out. So, <laughs> so I, I go along with that one. Right. We've got like a couple of day rooms where you can sort of put your feet up on the settee when it's your break time because getting hours break and that and some uh -huh. glasses and not go to them ones because they think there's something there. You get lots of old people that hallucinate and they see things and like one of the things we used to always oh, get really? in one of the rooms round and one of the wards like there's a room that was round the corner um, just where it's positioned and a few times like patients have said they've seen them. Um, Two, two little blonde girls sitting really? there they'll say, they'll say something about like blonde girls oh. so it's like and that just seems to be like a common hallucination of people die and they'll see like a pair of twins at the bottom of the bed sort of like smiling not horrible or anything ah. and they'll be and you get people talking to people that aren't there all the time but I think it's hallucinations me so I don't I don't believe in the supernatural as such I don't believe in God or anything like that but I do love ghost stories and I love getting spooked by stuff and I do think, ooh, and I'm just as likely to be the one that jumps the yard if there's a funny noise somewhere. <laughs> but I don't really believe in any of it. Um, you know, and my dad always used to say it, it was like when I used to get scared of ghost stories and that was like my dad's uh, uh, always saying was like, it's not the dude buggers you have to worry about, son, it's the living ones that'll cause you the bother. <laughs> and for some I reason that's right. always stuck with us. Yeah, you know, right. you don't have to worry about dead people, they don't do you any harm usually. I mean, I've once, when I was a student nurse, not, not when I was a student, when I was an actual student in design, back when I was about 19 or 20, I thought somebody walked into the room in the little unit that were written, there was nobody there, but uh -huh. there was, like, people I was sitting talking to. Right. And I thought I saw someone, you know, when you do a double take, and nearly shit, and I nearly <laughs> fell off the chair, uh -huh. thinking someone was there, and then no one was there, and they were all like, what, what, what was going on? So that kind of freaked them out a bit, where I thought I saw someone out the corner of my eye, but I imagine it was probably just a floater. You know, sleeping, sleeping. Yeah, past. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and like, I was probably yeah. at the time, you know, <clears throat> partaking in, yeah, yeah. in the booze and the like that I shouldn't uh, have been. And yeah, I was yeah. a bit heavy day the next day. So, so, it was just, so yeah. again, maybe it goes back to the old mind playing tricks on you and a bit of, bit of hallucinating and something. They're and good stories, like though, aren't they? I, I think more than anything, because I, I, like, I think a lot of that stuff is just like enjoying a good story yeah. you don't have to believe in the reality of it and it's just yeah. being taken into I mean I do yeah. believe in the reality because I've, I've I think, seen things but it could have been me again I think the, the nearest thing we've got to ghosts is like music and uh, record the recorded voice. I think, in a way, the, the thing we've got closest to like anything ghostly is like, is like it's always a record or something. Because when you think about how that takes your voice mm -hmm. and then imprints it electrically, yeah. and then you're left with an imprint of something that you can then play back, mm. that is that then mimics your voice so much that it sounds exactly like it. Uh -huh. Is that not more of a ghostly yeah, experience? Yeah, that's, well, that's how I feel about that graffiti that we saw. That that's the echoes of the past. There are plenty of them, photographs, recordings, etc. Mm -hmm. Time and t how time's, they reckon it's not linear and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So maybe when people see ghosts, it's a bit like that. It's like a recording or a swap, like a dimensional recording, uh -huh. where like a little bit somebody's yeah. pressed the rewind for a second mm -hmm. and you've got a little bit of something coming through. Or, you know, if you're recording, there's still a patch of what was there previous. Well, there's this stone in the Hancock Museum which is like ancient Celtic stone. Uh, it's like thousands of years old. And it's just a circle inside another circle inside another circle, uh, on and on. So there's loads of circles, all concentric. And that's how they perceive time, all happening mm. at once. So that idea that you can slip from one track 
into the wrong mm -hmm. track for a second and then back again or perhaps they slip mm -hmm. from the track into yours and yeah, then yeah. back again well sean uh, i just want to say thank you so much for coming on no Fogcast. it's been lovely uh thank you for accompanying me on the ghost tour but I think the most interesting stories are not the ones, the one we left the ghost to behind. I think the most interesting stories, it's just hearing about human experience, mm -hmm. how we perceive things and where we are in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do that end bit again. So, Sean Thomas, thank you so much for coming on the pod podcast <laughs> for the flop flop yeah. it's been a pleasure yeah, yeah. to be on the pod flop yeah. the flop cast yeah 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 and uh, i'm actually going to play out with one of your songs from the one of your acts uh, oh, the crikey. octopus rings twice yes indeed we were initially <laughs> called um tokyo sex wheel yeah. um, <laughs> There was seven bands when really? I had a look oh, called yeah. Tokyo Six Wheel. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I'm going to finish off with one of those. Thank you so much, Sean.
home, sweet home. Well, here I am back again. I pour myself an imaginary glass of cognac, pretend to smoke a Cuban cigar, and uh, not read one of the books in my fine library. Thank you to Sean Thomas for joining me today. There was music from Chlorine, Lumpama, and The Octopus Rings Twice. Everything about Inspector Fogg tends to live on the YouTube channel. Uh, there's also SoundCloud started up, sort of, and a Facebook group if you want to leave a comment there. You might also have noticed that I use a lot of sound effects and that I'm quite cheap. Uh, so for those sound effects, I've got to thank Urban Gorilla, Vibro Marenga, Set Uniman, and Joe Deshawn. Next time, I'll be meeting with Newcastle based singer Kath Tyler. Until then, fog out. <laughs>